وجدوا وجل من تقريم هبانا في زار مولد من في البار ربا فنكاب تي في تلخادم رسول وجعل جميع العلماء الحاملين وجعل جميع عاملين مخلصين وجعل جميع المخلصين ساحدين وجعل جميع سائدين الناسين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله رب العالمين إياك نعود إياك نصعين بسرعة مسحيم بسرعة لزين الله تعالى معي بمصر الله عليه الله وزير من فلاح مشين ما خلاح مشين غاشي شاق مشين اللي حسين وطلو زين خلاص اللي زاقص الله وزير بالناس هريك الناس الله الناس من شير وساس الناس غزي وسيس ويسدور الناس من جنة الناس الله من كل كريم لك رحمة الله مغفر له تكرم الناس الله هو كل كريم من غزى من سال رحمان وعيد بشكر بلا كفن تبسم الله رحمة السلام الله سلام سلام آمين بتي can you unmute yourself Yeah, you can start. So welcome to our fourth monthly webinar. Um, it takes place the first Sunday of the month at 7 p.m. Eastern and 6 Central. And um, this is actually our first time doing something not related to religion um, because we have, most of us here are college grad or college students or high school students. So we also want to help each other. And this is a good program. Uh, I personally, attended um, a similar presentation by our with Tekil, which is um, Senegalese networking. And we might talk about it a little bit because I think it's interesting um, for you guys who might want to join. And uh, I'll, from there, I just wanted her to come here and do the same thing because I think all of us can benefit from it because I did when I joined. So thank you again, our for being here. Uh, it's really a pleasure. Um, thanks, thanks for being here. Uh, and Betty, you can go ahead with our bio, then we can start, inshallah. So, welcome everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So, I'm just gonna go ahead and um, introduce our guest today. And um, so, welcome, Awa, and thank you so much for being here this evening with us. We appreciate you. Um, Awa was born in Kalak, Senegal, and raised in Harlem, New York. She had received her Bachelor of Arts from Bordeaux with a major in Africana Studies and a minor in French. I was spent most of her post Bordeaux career in the education sector, doing work around diversity and inclusion initiatives, resource relocation, data analysis, and policy policy and program management, as well as evaluation and implementation. Extremely passionate about. Um, implementation. Oh, I'm sorry. This has made her extremely passionate about program and project management, strategy development and implementation, as well as using data to inform and make strategic decisions. She later received her um, master's in education policy and social analysis from Columbia University, followed by an MBA from the Kelly School of Business at Indiana University. I'll at Nikawa Bodhi, an all-natural hair and skincare company based on traditional African recipes. She has joined Microsoft as an MBA intern the summer of 2017 as a part of the HR rotational program. Her first rotation in 2018 was in talent acquisition as a finance recruiter, followed by a role on global diversity and inclusion team as a project manager. She recently joined the global sales marketing and operations HR team as an HR business program manager, where she receives efficiency and agility across key HR teams and provides internal and external communication. So programmatic and change management support to the corporate vice president and the leadership team. In her spare time, she enjoys running, trying new dessert recipes and reading. So once again, thank you so much for being here with us. Um, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. If you can't hear me at any point, um, please say so in the chat. Um, so I want to make this as informal as possible. So um, I don't. If for those of you who are part of Tech Hill, you heard this presentation before. For those of you who are new, this will be brand new. 
Um, and even for those of you who are, who joined the previous one, maybe you'll get some new gems out of this one. Um, so yeah, can I just say something for people who <laughs> yeah. uh, this time is here today? So we, if you have a question, write it down on the chat. That's where we take the questions. And uh, I don't know how you want to do it. Or if you want to wait until the end or after each portion, it's up to you. Yeah, we can we can do questions after each portion, or if you have questions throughout, feel free to um, put it in the chat. And I actually I'm using a double screen, so if you t see me turning, it's because I'm looking at my other monitor, which has the presentation, and then I have the chat in my other window. Um, so do whatever is comfortable and easy for you all. If you want to wait till the end and ask your questions, you can do so. But I'm happy to like stop and pause throughout and answer questions um, as long as they're relevant to what's on the slides. And if there's a question that's asked and it's something that I know I'm gonna cover later, I'll just let you know that. And if I forget, let me know because I can be forgetful sometimes. Um, but yeah, um, we'll make this pretty informal. We'll try to make it fun. Um, I don't know how much fun talking about careers are, but we'll try our best to make it fun this evening for, for everyone. All right, yes. If you have a question, just write it down and we will just take it whenever we can, inshallah. Yeah. Uh, please, that's Perfect. all phone and we can start inshallah thank you perfect thanks setting all right everyone so um i, I realized that she was reading my bio it sounds so boring um hopefully you all don't think that so um what we're going to do this evening is go over a couple of things so the first thing that we're going to cover is just thinking about career planning what does that mean um why is it important and why should you be thinking about it even if you're not um, even if you're still in college, if you're about to graduate, if you're post-college, if you're in high school, I think some of the stuff that I'll cover here is relevant for everyone, regardless of where you're at um, in the different stages of your life. And so um, hopefully you too will find it helpful. Then we'll go over um, refining your resume. So I'll just go over some really, um, I would say like top tricks and, and things that you should focus on when it comes to your resume. Um, and I'll give you a couple of examples on that. And then we'll spend some time at the end talking about LinkedIn and how you can leverage LinkedIn to help you with um, building up your brand, as well as even thinking further in if you're looking for jobs or trying to connect with people, um, how you can use your LinkedIn for that. And so um, Betty did a great job reading my bio. And so um, one thing that, that I've done is, and, and I continue to do, and this is very important for everyone's career, is really having a solid understanding of who you are and the things that you value, the things that you believe in. And so it goes actually beyond just, you know, what's on your resume in regards to your education and your career or professional experience and your, and your volunteer work. And so it's taking time to also do pretty much like a self-analysis and think about who you are as a person. And so for me, in terms of like my personal profile, um, as mentioned earlier, like I, I was born in Senegal, born in Kolak, but I was raised in New York City. Um, I'm actually no longer in Seattle. So I'm actually currently in New York City. So um, I moved out of Seattle about two months ago. Um, and so back in New York City with my family um, in the interim. Um, other things about me when it comes to like my personal profile and things that you all should kind of, um, whether it's go do the test online, um, or figure out other ways to think about it is I'm an INTJ, which means um, I'm actually more on the, the side of being an introvert. Even though I'm fine with giving presentations, um, I've f facilitated large presentations for hundreds of people in the past, and I'm comfortable with doing that. But when it comes to my energy, when it comes to how I like to spend my time, I like small groups, I like spending time by myself. And so those are things I know about myself. And then insights is another training. Oh, um, I guess with the INTJ, a way you can actually take that test is to do Myers-Briggs. And so there is a free test you can take online and it's pretty much just like a personality test in, in a sense, but it really does give you a good understanding of where you are on that scale and how you work and operate with other people and how you process information on your own. Um, the other thing about me is my insights. And so insights is a, um, it's a training we have to do at Microsoft and ultimately these colors each stand for something different. And so when it comes to red, it means I am pretty um, direct. I want you to give me the information that I need to do my job and then you can kind of go on your way and just let me do my work. Blue means I'm super analytical. And so I like to know the information that I need. So whether that's the data in terms of the numbers or having as much information as possible, 
um, just making sure that that is something that I know is important to me. So my manager knows that as well. Um, green means um, wanting to like be involved. Like it's okay for me to be involved in things that I'm fine not being involved. And then yellow is like, show me you care. Um, maybe this is because I grew up in New York. Like I don't really need people to show me you care. And maybe that's the, um, the New Yorker in me where it's like, you kind of just go about your business, right? Um, so taking those personality tests really do, does help you understand how you operate and how you navigate things. Then is education, and I'm not going to go over this because this was already covered, but um, understand where you are in terms of your education, work experience, being able to quickly kind of retell your story and tell people what your work experience is, um, your skills and languages. This is actually really important, and sometimes we forget. So as you think about every single job that you've held, even if it's as a cashier or waiting tables, there is something that you learn in every single job. Like I worked at a restaurant when I was between my freshman and sophomore year of college. And at that point I learned really good customer service skills. I learned how, I learned conflict management actually while working at a restaurant because you learn how to work with difficult customers. And so thinking about every single job you've held, every single um, volunteer opportunity you've held, really take time to kind of break down what are some of the skills that I've learned from that um, position and how do I make sure I talk about it in a way that it's relatable to whatever job that I'm applying to. And then lastly is hobbies. And when it comes to your career, when it comes to talking about who you are, it's important to also talk about your hobbies. So one of mine is running. I've done two marathons. I do 5Ks and 10Ks. It's just something that I find enjoyable, even though most people don't like running. Um, cooking, baking, skincare. I'm pretty obsessed with skincare, hence why I have a skincare company. And then reading, right? So just learning and, and growing and making sure that I'm soaking in as much information um, as possible. So I would actually encourage everyone to, to think about, okay, as you think about these these buckets of personal profile, hobbies, education, skills and language and work experience, what would you put under every single one of those? Um, and then ask yourself, what, what did I learn and what's so important about these things that I'm putting there? So now let's jump into actual like career planning. So there's a couple of stages of career planning for everyone to, to keep in mind. The first part is self-discovery. And so that's, that's why the, the slide that I just showed is so important because it really does help with understanding who am I um, and who am I in a holistic sense. And so we're all here, we're, we're all Muslim. So that's a part of who you are. And then it's also digging deeper into what are the other parts of who, who I am that impacts the way that I make decisions, that impacts the things that I'm passionate about, and why is that important? The second stage is career goals. So really setting career goals by asking yourself, where do I want to be? So where do I want to be in six months? Where do I want to be in a year? Where do I want to be in five years? Um, where do I want to be in 10 years? I personally don't do beyond 10 years. And even saying where do I want to be in 10 years is something that I try not to do. I try to focus on, like, I do have these big long-term goals, but I do spend a lot of time focusing on, okay, in the next six months, what are some things that I can focus on and build skills on so that I can make sure I'm achieving something within that time frame? And the same thing with what, what can I achieve in the next year? What can I achieve in the next five years? And then you have career plan, your actual career plan. And so that's really thinking about, okay, how am I going to get there? What are the things that I need? Who are the people that are going to support me? Um, what are maybe it's the things that I need is, you know, maybe I need to get a degree. Maybe I need to get a certificate. Maybe there's certain trainings that I need to do in order to get there. And then who can help me? So who are the people in your life or in your network, whether it's from college or your family or friends who can help you actually meet those career goals? And then lastly, it's making that move. And so, um, you know, like, when is the right time? Sometimes it feels like it's hard to tell when the right time to make a career move is. But typically, I mean, you know, again, we're all Muslim here. So it's the Hada, um, and do other prayers to really understand, okay, how do I get to where I'm trying to be? Um, and does this make sense? Is this the right time? Or should I hold off until the next um, opportunity. And then, you know, everything does happen for a reason. So really listening um, and taking time to process the information around you. With the self-discovery piece, and again, feel free to chime in if you have a previous chat. Um, I'm happy to answer questions as we go along. 
so with the who am I is um, pointing out your interests. So what are the things that are interesting to you outside of work? Um, and so, as I mentioned earlier, some of mine are like skincare and self-care and running and cooking and baking. And so those are my interests, values. What are the things that are important to you in terms of values? So whether it's things related to your religion, if it's things related to your family, really thinking about what are those things that you value and, and where would you also put them on a scale, right? Um, if you were to have a list of 10 things, how would you rate those things that you value? Skills, and so mentioned this earlier, but really thinking about what are the skills that you have? What are the capabilities that you have? And how does it align and how is it connected to maybe a job that you're looking for or a job that you want in the future? And if you don't have those skills, this is when you start to do the work of like, okay, now how do I um, start actually building out a plan to make sure I get those skills by a specific time? Preferences. So preferences in a sense deals with both your interests, your values and your skills, but it's really, what are the things that you prefer? Do you prefer, right now everyone's working from home, right? So do you prefer working at home or do you prefer being in the office? Do you prefer being in a large company versus a small company? Do you prefer a company that's more mission driven or do you prefer a company that's just making money and it's a job that you have? But really figuring out what are your preferences and there's nothing wrong with having one preference over another or seeing that your preference is different from someone else's. Um, the thing to understand also is your preferences are gonna change throughout your life. Like I think about um, you know, some of the things that I preferred or thought that I pre preferred, um, preferred in the past are very different from the things that I prefer now. So now the things that are important to me are work-life work -life balance, having a job that, or a company that's mission-driven and making sure that I feel there's an alignment there. So a couple of questions to ask yourself when it comes to answering the question of who am I are, you know, what is your superpower? And so this is a question that's actually asked in a lot of interviews. Um, and it comes to the, it comes in the form of what are your strengths? And so sometimes they'll ask you, what is your superpower? Sometimes they'll ask you, what are your strengths? And so I would encourage everyone to figure out, okay, what are my top three strengths? What are the things that I know I am extremely good at? Um, what are the things that if I think about my career, if I think about my education, are the things that I've consistently been good at or I've been told by others that I'm good at? If you don't know what your superpower is or you have a hard time figuring it out, ask someone, ask, first ask someone who you work closely with, also ask a family member, and then ask a friend. And the reason why you ask these three different folks is because they'll each give you something different and that could really help you understand and create a, a better, more holistic picture of what your superpowers are. And so examples of superpowers, one that I use um, a lot because I feel like it's kind of who I am is um, I am a system thinker. And so system thinking is, or someone who's a system thinker is someone who just, who doesn't just look at something as one thing. I think about how are all of these things that you're giving me, everything that you're telling me, how are they connected? Why are they connected? And is the con does the connection make sense? And so that is one of my superpowers. Another one, um, and these are like fancy words that I'm using right now for these things, but they're fancy words that you can use. And if you use them in, in an interview, they're gonna be like, whoa. Um, another one is agile learner. So when you're an individual who's an agile learner, that means you are willing to move quickly and be flexible with your learning, which means if there's a situation where you don't know something, you're actually willing to go and do the work to learn and to learn quick and then go back and do the work. So again, those are just a couple of examples of superpowers. So it can be more, even more simplistic as, you know, my one of my superpowers is um, connecting people. So I know how to bring people together. I know how to make people get along. That's a superpower. Another one could easily be, you know, if you're a data scientist, it's like I'm super analytical. I know how to analyze data and make sense of data and synthesize it in, synthesize it in a way that makes sense. So really take time to figure out what your superpower is. Um, then what three words would others use to describe you? And so this goes back to, to what I had said previously of asking you know, a coworker, asking a family member um, and asking a friend um, to see what are the three words that they would use to describe you and to describe your, whether it's your work habits or just how you interact with folks. What bores you? 
Um, we don't ask ourselves this question a lot. Sometimes we are in jobs that are boring and sometimes we're in jobs that are boring and we just kind of have to suck it up and do the work because that's the stage in our life that we're at. But once you understand what is boring to you, what's not interesting to you, then you have to ask the question of, okay, what do I need to do to get to a place where I'm not bored? Where do, what do I need to do to get to a place where I'm actually in a job that's enjoyable, that I really like, and that's gonna kind of move things forward for me? What excites you? So what are the things that are exciting in your job? What are the things that, um, you know, if someone is presenting on or someone is talking to you about you like you know you're all ears you're willing to listen you're willing to engage in it you're willing to even go and do research outside of work because it's something that you're really excited about and you want to learn more about and so taking time to figure out what bores you and what excites you is extremely important um, what values and morals do you hold firm to and so going back to um, the previous slide of, of values right we all have different things that we value in our lives. We all have different morals and, and ways that we live our lives, but really having a solid understanding of, okay, what are those values? What are those morals? And is my company gonna allow me to, to, to live those values and those morals? Um, and sometimes again, you are in situations where you may not get what you want 100% of the time because nothing's perfect, but at that point, then figuring out what are the things that I'm willing to compromise and what are the things that I'm not willing to compromise on? What are you curious about? What are the things that you're always asking questions about or you're always wanting to learn more about? So the more you ask yourself um, about your curiosities and the things that um, actually drive you to be interested in things, the, the better as well. So a couple of tests that I mentioned, one of them I mentioned earlier was Myers-Briggs. So that's one that I would recommend. Strength Finders is another one. And Strength Finders also, um, it, it actually has a book that helps you really have a good understanding of where you are in um, the different aspects of it. And then Insights, Insights is usually most companies do Insights, but um, I don't, at least I don't believe they do like individual tests, but if your company or your job is looking for a new tool to use to help people figure out their strengths, I would um, definitely encourage insights. Are there any questions before I move, move on to, to the next slide? And you can either get off mute or if you're more comfortable um, using the chat, feel free to use that. And I'm also happy to, if, you're, if you feel more comfortable sending me a private message, I'm willing to take that as well and keeping things anonymous. Yeah, we don't have anything on the chat right now, but uh, okay. one thing I wanted to ask, um, well, someone, there is a comment. This is great. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thank you, Aisha. Yeah, she's right. So um, when you have, you talked about the morals and the company values and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. how do you determine that when you have a job offer or when you are applying to that? When When is the right time to try to out that before yeah. accepting a position or, you know, before applying? Yeah, I think the challenge with like the morals and values is sometimes you hear one thing, like when you're applying and you're talking to people before you start the job. And then when you get there and you're in the culture and you're seeing it and living it, you're like, oh, this is not the same as what people were telling me. Because um, if they, especially if folks want you to join their company, they're going to sell it to you however they can. But this is why it's so important to do your due diligence of talking to as many people as possible. I know for me, um, so I, I had interned at Microsoft, but even before I like I had accepted the internship, I spoke to I spoke to probably at least like six people. Um, some of some of the folks were like alumni from my college um, who worked at the company or had worked there before. Others were people who currently worked at the company that I found on LinkedIn and saw that we had some kind of connection. Um, and then others were just like a family friend that they knew someone who who had worked or has or was currently working and was willing to talk to me and the question that i typically ask when it comes to like the values and the morals is you know i ask the person like is there anything about this company that you disagree with to your core that you would change if you could and what that does is it makes that person think about like what's personally important to them and is, does it not align with what the company is offering or what the story they're telling. And so um, it's hard though, because again, like sometimes 
you'll hear one thing before and then when you start it's something different. But I will say, I think, um, especially now given social media, given the internet, it is easy to find. And I, I mean, I would say just even just go on Twitter, it is very easy to, to learn about companies because people even internal to the company have no shame and have no, like they don't care about outing their company if there's something that's wrong. Like they're more than happy to tell the world, like this company is not doing this, this and that, this is what they believe in. It doesn't line with X, Y, Z. And so you really have to do your research and talk to as many people as possible. And then once you're there, it's continuing to ask questions. Um, and sometimes what happens also is it's not necessarily the company's values or morals, um, because the company may have one specific value or moral. It's sometimes a person yeah. in the company, or it's sometime, um, sometimes if it's not an individual, sometimes it's just a team and you just maybe you weren't so lucky and you ended up in a team that wasn't as great. And, and I've, I've experienced that. I have friends who've experienced that as well. And so at that point, you have to kind of determine like, is this really define the entire company or is it this specific situation? Is it this specific team? So just really taking the time to slow down and, and understand that I think is key. Yeah. That's a great question. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I remember I did the same thing. I mean, I didn't know people, but yeah. I did my research and that's something that I told my brother. He's on the line, but when he was okay. graduating, I told him, when you have an interview, go do your research about the company. Yeah. And when I didn't know anything about the company that I'm working for right now, I went on LinkedIn and mm -hmm. I looked for people that works there and anybody that seems like I can talk to them, I, I did. And I found uh, somebody who was um, from Burkina Faso, you know, mm -hmm. trying to, you know, African or Senegalese. And I talked to him and he really tell, told me great, great things about the company and yeah. really important because you don't want to get yourself into something that you don't feel comfortable or have yeah. even working for that company. And it's yeah. really important to like what you're doing and feel feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. And thank no, you. Great question. Yeah. Uh, I think you can. Yeah. Great. So let me see, well, let me, okay, now we're, we're in the second piece of career goals. So where do I wanna be? So that's thinking, as I mentioned earlier, you have to kind of think about it in a, in a couple of different ways. So one piece is short-term, your short-term goals, your long-term goals, qualifications, like what qualifications do you have or do you need? Um, compensation, and sometimes people don't feel comfortable talking about money, but you should learn to feel comfortable talking about money. And I, I'll just, Say that right now and I'll repeat it a couple more times throughout this session especially I think as black people we need to learn to be comfortable talking about money when it comes to looking at jobs when it comes to negotiating so we're going to talk about compensation um, so let's start with the short term and the long term goals and so a couple of ways that you can really set up and figure out your short term and long term goals is using the SMART method. So I know a couple of people may have seen this in the past, but um, so SMART is, is one of probably the best or most well-known um, ways to really um, start setting goals for yourself. So it has to be specific. And so you can't have just a general goal of, oh, I wanna be a director in 10 years. And it's like, okay, now you have the, the time frame down, but it's not specific enough okay, you want to be a director of what? You want to be a director where? What, what kind of director do you want to be? Like, what, you know, like, what does that actually really mean? Um, it needs to be measurable. So how are you actually determining success? How are you measuring the, the success of whatever goal you're setting? Um, and what does that look like? And are you okay with, with, um, with it kind of changing throughout time? Is it attainable? So attainable is a nice way of saying, is it a realistic goal? Or are you like shooting? I mean, there's nothing wrong with shooting for the moon. Like I would say shoot as high as you can. Um, but is this something that is truly attainable um, for where I'm at right now in my career or for where I'm at right now in my life? Um, and if it's not attainable now, this is when you then, you know, jot it down. This doesn't mean get rid of that goal. It means jot it down and, and start to create a work back plan of like, okay, now how do I actually get there? Is it relevant? Is the goal relevant to the things that you're interested in? Is it relevant to the things that you value? Is it relevant to, um, you know, 
the jobs that you actually want to secure or who or the things that you want to do in your life? Or is it just like a random goal that you have because you see someone else has it? And I'm going to say that again, is it a random goal that you have? Or is it something that you see someone else has and someone else wants? And so as humans, we do this thing of like comparing where we're at, where one person is at in their career and where another person is at in their career without knowing their full stories or really understanding how they got there. So take time to really, um, I don't know, someone's drawing on my slide. Usman, you're drawing on my slide. I don't know if you realize that. <laughs> he probably doesn't realize it. He's, um, but yeah, so, so that's um, the relevant piece. And then the time frame is really thinking about, okay, how long do I need to really accomplish this goal? And so is, it a, is this goal for the next year? Is it for the next six months? Is this for the next two years? Is it for the next five years? Really setting a realistic time frame for yourself and revisiting that time frame because maybe at one point you realize, oh, I'm actually moving faster than I thought. Now I can actually move my time frame back because it's not going to take me maybe five, 10 years as I thought. Maybe it's actually going to take me three years. And that's like a beautiful thing. So setting smart goals. And then the, the second piece of, of career planning is going to prepare. And so this is why I mentioned you know, networking. So you have to network. Networking is really uncomfortable for, I think, a lot of people because we're not. Sometimes I think also you're never. Um, feel like you need to give them something in return. So, not a zero game. It's not a whole different thing. It should be a genuine relationship. It should be a connection. Doing that. Who here? I think some may be off mute. Okay, it's gone now. It's gone. Okay, good. Is that? Can everyone hear me? Okay. Yeah, we can hear you good now. We didn't hear okay. the last. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was just breaking. Um. So networking and a cup and I'll go over a couple ways of networking, but one of them is um, LinkedIn. So we'll spend some time uh, talking about LinkedIn. Another way is just talking to people. So getting comfortable with sending random messages and random emails to people, asking them for 30 minutes of their time. You never know where that one conversation is going to take you. And I've actually seen that play out for me multiple ways in my career and in my life where, you know, I had coffee with one person and it was like an hour coffee. And before I knew it, they were helping me to find a job. And then, you know, they've stayed in my life um, ever since. And so there's a lot of things that can come out of networking and it's just learning to be more comfortable with it. Um, next piece of how you're getting there is training and education. So what are the certificates you need? What are the degrees you need if that's important? Sometimes you, it's not required. Sometimes you don't need a specific education. You don't need a specific degree, but the more you can understand what are those things that you need, the better. Then is job experience. Are there certain requirements that are needed for me to get to where I want to be? So what are the jobs that I need to start thinking about having now so that I can get to where I want later? And I'll use a, a more clear example of that of like, so I know for me in the future, like I do want to be an executive, um, whether at Microsoft or another company. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. Like, you know, God knows. But right. Um, I know that's something that I'm really interested in. And so what that means is I've had to kind of step back and figure out, okay, in order to be an executive, what are the things that I need to work on um, in my career now, earlier in my career now, so that when the time comes, I'm ready. And so when the time comes, when people look at my resume and they look at all the work that I've done, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, she's at the right place to actually get this position. So start, start thinking big, start creating those plans to figure out how do you get to where you want. Um, Connection with managers. So connection with manager means both connection with your current manager, so whoever your manager is, um, building a connection with them, but it's also future managers. So if you work at a large company or a nonprofit education, wherever you work, hospital, it doesn't matter where you work, um, make sure you're building a really, you know, 
strong and positive relationship with your manager if possible. And this is to, and the preface to that is some managers suck. Like that's just the reality. It's sometimes you don't, you end up not having a great manager and that's really hard to deal with. Um, but for the most part, you know, building a solid relationship with your manager. And then also if there's a manager that you see in a different in a different um, org or in a different part of the company that you've heard really positive things about, set up time with that person. Um, the role that I'm in now, I got because back in like December, I started sending random emails to everyone, not everyone, but like random emails to very specific people saying, hey, my name is Awa. I'm really interested in like a global experience. I heard you lead XYZ team. Is it possible for me to spend 30 minutes and just get to know a little bit more about you and to get to know a little bit about, more about your organization and the things that you do? And people were more than willing to spend time and chat with me. Um, you know, sometimes it took two months before I talked to that one person, but it was still worth the wait. And, and I say it's, it was worth the wait because I got the role that I'm in now. And the reason why I'm in New York is because I'm waiting to actually transition um, to France, inshallah. Um, but, but it's, it's the result of me building those connections early on. And even though it was uncomfortable, even though it was awkward, I knew that I had to get out of my head and get out of my own feelings and talk to those people because they were the only ones who were really gonna help me get to where I wanted to go. Then finding mentors. And so finding a mentor is extremely important. And so your mentor, yes, can be your manager, but you should try to find someone who is not your manager. So I think it's important to have a couple of different mentors. So having a mentor at your company who works within your company, who's you know more of a senior level that you can talk to, um, then having a mentor who may be like one or two levels above you. And the reason why I say one or two levels above you is because they've already experienced what you're experiencing now. So they are closer to it and they can really help you think through how to navigate it. And I, I've found that so helpful because they can give me advice on things that they had challenges with before so that I could approach it differently. And then the senior managers help me think more like the senior folks who are mentors help me think more big picture of like, okay, Awa, you should be working on this. You should be working on that. So that's within your company. Also try to find a mentor who sits outside of your company. So the person, the mentor who sits outside of your company will be um, someone who is gonna help kind of expand your network. And this is why the networking piece is important. And so that mentor may be a random person that, you know, someone else that you know connected you with and you had a conversation and you were like, okay, like we, bought, we, we vibe really well. I think this person would be a good person for me to stay in touch with and then making sure you actually have um, like a cadence and a rhythm of talking to them. So with me, um, my mentors, I have some mentors who I talk to every other month. I have some mentors who I talk to every quarter. And so that's like every three to four months. I have other mentors who I talk to every six months. Um, and the reason why is because I'm sharing different information with them and they're serving different purposes to help me think about different things. So really taking time to do that I think is important. So then it's, sorry, this thing is gonna drive me nuts. I don't know how to get rid of it. Um, okay, I can't get rid of it, but um, then we have performance and um, career conversations. So this is, a. am gonna keep using the word awkward because I think most parts of talking about yourself and getting help on the things that you need to do better at can sometimes feel really uncomfortable but again, we have to learn how to do it because that's the only way we're gonna get better. And that's the only way you're gonna know why you're performing at the level that you're performing in. And if you're not getting a promotion or if you're not advancing, if you don't have these conversations, you'll never know. So when you're having a performance and career conversations, the things that you should be talking about with your manager are, sorry, the window's open, um, are contributions and impact, right? So what are the things that are, you know, have, contrib have you contributed to your day-to-day -day job? What are the things that you've made really strong impact on within the team, within the organization or different areas? And so what I do actually, and this is gonna sound very type A, but it could be something as easy as like creating an Excel sheet. And again, I know this sounds crazy, but create an Excel sheet and track, like literally track the things that you're doing and the projects that you're working on 
And in the tracker, you know, you'll have one row that says the name of the project, another row that'll say, um, who are the people you worked with? And then the last row will be, what were my accomplishments? What were the things that I did really well on that project? And so the we're really forgetful as humans also. We do a lot of things and we don't do a good job of talking about those things. So if you have that tracker when it comes time to talking about your performance and time to talking about where you're at in your job with your manager, you'll have something ready that you can go back to and refer to and you won't be sitting there trying to like wrap your brain around, okay, what was the last thing I did? Who did I work with? How did I really do on it? Um, so take time to do that. Um, when, when you're talking to your manager or whoever you're chatting with about your performance, ask them like, what could be done differently? What are the things that I need to be doing differently to improve? Um, sometimes you're gonna have a manager who's gonna be like, you're doing great, everything's great, you're wonderful, everything's great. That's nice but you should push because it's not about, you know, having your ego feel good. It's not about, you know, just doing good or doing great. It's about, okay, but what are the things that I can be doing differently? Are there specific things that I can do to learn more, to stretch myself and, and, and help out with? So find ways to really think about how do you improve instead of just great is good, but you want to move beyond great. Um, Think about your key deliverables going forward. And so um, I do this about once a quarter with my manager of like, these are the top things that I'm gonna be working on the next few months. Um, this is where I need support. And these, this is what I'm hoping to accomplish. And so what that allows us to do is he can track you know, where I'm at with those key deliverables and he can also figure out how can he help me and support me throughout. And the last one is how will you learn and grow? And so learning and growing beyond just the job. So thinking about how are you going to learn and grow outside of your job? How are you going to learn and grow about things that aren't related to your job, but could really help move you forward and help advance who you are? So things that I've picked up that I'm like, I guess, learning a little bit more about is I've done a lot of like project management and program management stuff, but I've never taken like a formal like class or have never taken like formal lessons on it. And so what I've been doing and whatever free time I have, which isn't much, but um, what I do is, you know, LinkedIn Learning has free like digital skilling and like skilling opportunities. And you don't need to have a membership. You don't need, you, all you need to do is have a LinkedIn account and you can learn how to be a better project manager. You can learn how to brand yourself. You can learn how to synthesize data and storytell. There are so many resources online. Um, and this is also like a plug because Microsoft owns LinkedIn, but we did this thing during COVID because people were stuck at home. And then a lot of people have also lost jobs, unfortunately, during COVID of like, okay, for those who are at home who don't have jobs right now, but still want to develop skills so that they can be ready, we have a bunch of resources on, I'm telling you like so many different things. And I would encourage everyone to look at it. Even if you do have a job right now and you feel fine, go and see and look, are there things there that could help make you better, that can improve you and make you stand out a bit more for the next time you're ready for your next role. Then we have the mentorship piece. And so um, a couple of things I wanted to, to talk about with mentorship is there's this idea of mentorship and then there's this idea of sponsorship. They're very different, um, even though they seem a bit similar. So a mentor can be anyone. And I've already kind of um, kind of clarified like how I would break it down if I was, I was you all. But um, a, a sponsor is actually someone who's at a senior level, who, is, who has a seat at the table. And when it comes to making decisions and helping to move things forward, they will actually be the person who will speak on your behalf. Um, and I'm going to use, you know, my current job again, as an example, my, my sponsor just happens to be the corporate vice president. And it just happens to be him because I was gutsy enough to send him a note and be like, hi, I'm our, can I just take 30 minutes of your time to just learn about you and your organization? And again, it sounds very simple and it sounds very like, why would you do that? But again, everything about this is strategic. I didn't even think that I was gonna, you know, connect with him or like we were gonna, he was gonna wanna sponsor me, 
but we had such a great conversation. We very similar personality. He really understood what I was trying to get at in terms of where I want to be in my career. He had a really good idea of like the skill sets that I had and how I can apply it to different things. And so when it came to the, the job that I have now, he was at that table when they were deciding who was going to fill that role. And he was able to speak on my behalf to help me to get it. So this is why, again, it's so important to network. It's so important to start building connections with people and to start telling your story. And sometimes we shy away from self telling our stories, but the more you tell your story, the more you tell your story in a way where it's not like, I'm not telling you my story for you to pity me. I'm telling you my story so you can see and understand the things that I've done in my life and how I've gotten to where I'm at now. Then um, <clears throat> mentors are there to like have discussions. So they'll help you talk about, you know, think about your skills and your capabilities. Whereas um, your sponsor, again, will help you when it comes to promotions. They'll help you when it comes to building connections. So they can actually help you expand your network, as can your mentor. And they'll draw visibility towards you for um, when you're not at that level to be in those rooms. Uh, mentors are helping you to kind of like craft and figure out what does your career vision look like. And then after you've kind of crafted that out, the sponsor is actually the one who's in the driver's seat helping to move it along. Then you have the mentor who kind of just offer insight and they'll give you advice and tell you if something's good or not, or if you should think about things differently. And then the sponsor is your champion. So again, they're the ones advocating for you. They're the ones moving things forward for you. And so I would encourage everyone, you know, Regardless of, again, where you work, this isn't, this, the things that I'm sharing is not specific to corporate America. Like you can apply this to any job that you have. You can even apply this, like if I think back to college, I could actually apply this mentorship and sponsorship piece to, you know, the relationships I had with some of the faculty um, at my different, different schools, because they're the ones who can help me find jobs after graduation and find internships because they have the connections. And so this is something that, goes for everyone. So then we have um, career moves. So when is the right time? This is always hard. Um, again, you can do it. So I, I always, I believe that's definitely one way of figuring out if something is the right time for you, if it's the right thing for you. Um, another thing is, you know, breaking it down as like, is this practical versus is it ideal? Like, does this really make sense? Ultimately, like, does this make sense? Does it make sense for me to take this opportunity now? Does it make sense for me to make this move now? Or should I, you know, stay for another six months and work on these skill sets and then go to the next thing? Do I have the right skill sets to really be successful? Um, so the thing here with job requirements is um, you don't have to have 100% of the skill sets to be successful. Even if you have 30%, and I'm, every, again, everyone here is black, white men, and I'm going to use, because this is actually proven in research, like white men will apply to jobs, even if they meet like 25% to 30% of the qualifications, which means there's a list of 10 things they need to have to be able to get the job. They, they meet literally maybe the top three or three of them, and they're like, oh, okay, yeah, I can definitely do this, and they'll apply. We need to carry that same mindset forward of like, and again, this is gonna sound whatever. Um, I got, but like the the thing I tell myself and that I remind myself of is, um, I know I'm not mediocre. I know I've worked hard to get to where I'm at. But if I even have the smallest confidence of like a mediocre white man, I could be so successful because all I have to do is look and say, oh my god, I meet three out of ten. I'm gonna still apply and put myself out there. Because I also truly believe the answer is no, unless you try. The answer is no, unless you ask. So if you don't put yourself out there, if you don't apply, how are they going to know you exist? How are they going to know that you potentially could fit this opportunity? And there are also a lot of hiring managers who are not looking for someone to come in and have 100% of the skills. There are a lot of hiring managers who will say, yes, I'm looking for all of these things, but I'm willing to take someone who's willing to learn and who's willing to grow because that's important to them. So don't limit yourself, make sure that you're looking um, and, and seeing and applying, apply to everything um, and anything, as long as it's something that also you, you wanna do. So don't just apply for the sake of applying. 
if you apply, make sure it's a job that you would actually want to do. If you know you're not interested in data, don't apply to any data jobs. Find, if you're interested more in communication, apply to the communication job. Find the things you're interested in, put your application out there. Job requirement in terms of location. So um, some jobs will require you to move, others won't. Um, when I took the job at Microsoft, they required me to move to Seattle for the previous two years. Um, you know, that meant I was gonna be all the way on the West Coast and I've, I've lived out of New York before, so this wasn't the first time, but um, Seattle's far, it's far from New York. Um, and so I had to decide like, you know, can I do this temporarily and then see what's next? And it was a, it was a good decision and worked out for me. And now of like the international experience, I'm like, okay, I feel like this is also another good timing for me um, in terms of making the move and, and going on to the next thing. So really asking yourself, does the, does the location matter? And if it matters, why does it matter? Is it gonna be temporarily or is it gonna be more permanent? And also keeping in mind, like, especially right now, everything's remote for the most part. Um, so I think a lot of companies are gonna start this is, I don't know if this is going to be the case, but I do believe a lot of companies are starting to rethink what it means to have people in the office, to really rethink what it means to have people in certain headquarters or locations. So I think this is actually the ideal time to be applying to roles, even if they're in locations that you may not be um, 100% interested in, because you never know, they may actually be a shift and they may ask you to just be remote. Um, available opportunities. Are you weighing all of your available opportunities? Um, or are you just taking one because it sounds nice and looks nice? So really making sure you take time to see what, what all is out there. So when it comes to um, career growth, a, a model for that, and, and again, jump in if anyone has questions, please. Um, a model for that is, it's, we call it GROW. Um, and so it stands for a couple of things, but the, the G is goals. So how are you setting your goals? I know we went over this again. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna share the slide um, with Sudi so he can share it with everyone um, so folks can have it if they wanna revisit this because it's, it's a little wordy, but, and also it'll help you think about the questions you should be asking yourself. So thinking about your goals, thinking about your short-term, long-term goals, what do you wanna do in the future? Um, who do you wanna be? Um, why do you wanna do the work that you're interested in? Then R is reality. So what barriers exist? Like, are there certain things that you don't have? Are there certain barriers that you're gonna have to go over to really get to where you need to be? And so that's thinking about the skills, that's thinking about your relevant experience. And so taking time to understand that. Then O is for options. What are your options? What are your options now? What are your options in the future? What have been your options in the past? And how did you weigh those options? And do you need to maybe rethink how you weigh those options? And then um, what are, you know, who can help you in your network to really, understand those options before you make your final decision. Um, I know a lot of us tend to, and I think this is a huge part, part of like Senegal East culture where we keep a lot of things to ourselves before we make certain decisions and certain moves. And I totally get that. But when it comes to your career, when it comes to, especially if you're in the US and you're working for an American company, and especially if you're working for corporate, um, you need to really learn how to get comfortable with sharing your goals with people because you're not gonna be able to do it on your own, you know? Um, and so you, you need to learn how to, obviously you don't need to share everything. Like I'm still a pretty, like I'm a very private person. Like there's, I limit what I share, but I know that when it comes to certain things in my career, I have to share it with my manager. I have to share it with my skip level and my sponsors and my mentors because they're the ones who are gonna help me accomplish those things. And so um, this will also mean figuring out who is your, I call them, I call the folks like my trusted advisors, like who are my trusted advisors that I know I can go to and I trust them. And I know that regardless of where I'm at in my career, they're gonna be the ones who are really gonna help me make sense of the things that are happening. Then we have W, so way forward. So what do you need to do next? What do you need to stop doing? Um, we don't ask ourselves that question of like, what do we need to stop doing? Sometimes um, we've been doing the same thing for years and it's, it may have worked before, that doesn't mean it's still gonna work. So what are the things that you're doing now that you need to stop doing to help you move things forward? And then what support do you need? What, like, what does support actually look like and what does it mean? And I will say, um, 
I still have a very hard time answering that last question of like, what support do you need? Even to this day, like if a manager asks me that, like I, sometimes I don't know. I'm like, I actually really don't know what I need. And I think that's a fine answer to give to people also, because then they can ask you other questions to help you really dig a little bit deeper. And so when it comes to support that you need, maybe you need, you know, you, you maybe one of the things you need is you need to learn how to network better. Maybe you need to learn how to, you know, work on your presentation skills, but really asking that question and making sure that you're building, again, trusted advisors who are going to help you. So before we jump to the next session of refining your resume, um, I'm going to pause real quick, drink some water. And um, if there are any questions on anything that we just covered, um, feel free to jump in. If there are comments as well, um, feel free to jump in as well. All right. Thank you. Uh, I think you really covered some good points. And I'm getting a lot of feedbacks on social media <laughs> from people that oh, are joining. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I forgot share. this is on YouTube as well. Yeah, it is. Um, okay. It's on foundations. Um, That's great. Which, uh, actually are there any questions on there? Uh, oh, wait. If there, if there are, I'm happy to answer some on there. And again, if, for the folks who are on the Zoom, feel free to, to get off chat. And again, if you're not comfortable and you want to send me a um, private message, feel free to do that as well. Yeah, stop saying it's great. It's good. Ask questions. <laughs> It's okay if you don't have questions. Also. That's totally fine. No pressure. Yeah, the mentor thing I think is really important, and mm -hmm. I would take myself as an example because, um, like you said, as Black people, we don't really uh, talk about money and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Well, having a mentor really helped me to um, to really set my goals, um, mm -hmm. see what I need to do and what I need to bring to my manager. Yep. Yeah. So when I went to my manager, I know what to talk what to talk about. And, you know, try to give him some goals too. Like, this is what I need to accomplish. So if I do this and this and that, will I be able to get this and that? So those are some things that you need to talk about because the mentor is really a guide. Like I, in the past, I did not talk about money at all. I was just working, working and stuff. But after talking to him, a lot has changed, you know, and I was able to get a lot from the company that I really needed, but didn't know what to do because... Mm -hmm. As black people, we we usually just work. We don't, you know, we just work, get the money, and go. We don't really try to do anything. And I think it's really important to keep that in mind. I have a mentor. I don't have a sponsor, but I'll work on it. <laughs> yeah, and the sponsor piece also, like that, that happens naturally. So yeah. typically, um, with mentors, like you can ask someone to be your mentor, um, but with a sponsor, it, it it works a little bit differently. You're not going to necessarily ask someone to be a sponsor. It's more so of later down the line, they'll ask, you know, they'll, they may, you may have a conversation with them and they'll mention that they're your sponsor. So like with, with one of my sponsors, he just happened to say it like at the end of one of our conversations. And he was just like, okay, like, I know what your goals are. I know you want to get to, you want to get international experience. I know these are the things that you like, and these are the things that you don't like. I'm going to do whatever I can in my power to help you get to that place. And so at that point, I knew that he was going to be in the background moving things forward. Um, and so sometimes also what you'll realize is someone may, they'll start off as your mentor and mm -hmm. then as they progress in their career or even mm -hmm. just like as the relationship buds, they'll end up actually being your, your sponsor without you even knowing it. And sometimes we forget there are a lot of people in the background who are helping us and who are moving things forward for us that we're not even aware of. Um, and I think that's also the beauty of it. It's like, you know, having that gratitude and, and, and just, being open and being open to folks. So I, I see a question came in. Um, yeah. When it comes to choosing a list of companies to apply, what process should we follow to come up with a list? Oh yeah, this is a good one. So what I, um, what I did um, is I figured out, I'm going to go back actually. Let me go back this way. Um, let's see, where is it? Okay. So let me actually go here. So a couple of ways that I decided, sorry about all the movements in the slides. Okay, so we'll start here. So a couple of ways that I would um, recommend people to kind of think about in terms of the process for figuring out 
list of companies that are um, companies that you should think about or are interested in applying is um, first, again, you need to have like really strong self-awareness. It starts there. Like it really starts with what are your interests? What are your values? What are the skills that you have? What are the things that you prefer? So once you have that piece like down and you know what those things are that you're not will, that you're not going to um, kind of move on. And those are the things that really help determine who you are. Then that's when you start thinking about where do you want to be? So at this point, um, you, you have a couple of things that you can, you can do. And these are the way, this is one of the ways that I had done it when I started business school and I was trying to decide, okay, what are the companies I'm interested in? What are the companies I'm going to apply to for internships and full time? And the, the things that I knew were important to me were three things. I knew culture was important. So the culture of the company, um, like how did the company treat the people? How did the company treat um, the function, because I am in HR, I wanted to make sure whatever company I was going to work at, they saw HR as a strategic partner and not as just people who like fired and hired and recruited people, which is like not even my job, right? I wanted, it to, I wanted HR to be seen as a strategic partner. I wanted to be at a company that I knew would value who I am as a person and the things that I believe in and the things that um, are important to me in my life, especially like as a Black Muslim woman. And so I knew those that had to be a part of like the cultural piece of it. Um, the other part of culture was I wanted to be at a company that I knew um, would respect my boundaries. And you have to kind of determine what are those boundaries for you? What are the things that um, you're just, that these are the things about who you are and what you believe in and you're not gonna move on them and will the company respect that? And so once I had that, so that's culture. Then um, the other thing that I, taught about was my goals. So those are my short-term and my long-term goals. Um, is this company going to allow me to actually truly meet these short and, and long-term goals when it comes to career and movement? And the way you know that is, and it takes a little bit of stalking, and a lot of this is work, but I promise you it pays off. Like, hopefully I'm an example of it does pay off. It, it takes a lot of work at the beginning, but, you know, inshallah, you put the effort in, everything works out well. Um, and so with the short-term and long-term goals, it's looking at maybe a certain positions that you're interested in at the time being or in the future and going on LinkedIn and going on the company's webpage on LinkedIn and seeing what are the different positions that they have that people are in and then finding, and again, this is stalkerish, but finding a person who matches the things that you're interested in and looking at their career path within the company and seeing also like what are the things they've done? How long did it take for them to move from point A to point B? And it's gonna look different also for everyone, but this will give you an idea. Um, and another way to get that is also by talking to people in the company, if you're able to build um, connections or network with them. The other thing that was important to me, so culture was one, short-term, long-term goals is another one. The other thing that I knew was important to me was, is this, is this company gonna, um, give me the opportunities um, to learn and to grow. And so there's a difference between having your short-term and long-term goals in terms of where you wanna be in your career. You can get to different places in your career without learning and growing, right? You could just be checking the box and you're, you're moving along, but learning opportunities is really important to me. Like I am a huge believer in education. I'm a huge believer in continuing to improve myself in whatever way possible. And so I knew I wanted to be at a company that also valued that. And then the last piece is money. Like I wanted to make sure I was going to get paid well, because I have student loans from, from, you know, from one of my grad schools. And so I knew that the overall package in terms of compensation was important. Um, and again, some people will say it's not important to each their own. For me, it is important because I want to build generational wealth. I want to be able to buy real estate here and in Senegal. I want to be able to, you know, inshallah, like whenever I do have, I'm, I'm, I get married and I have kids or whatever, I want to be able to support them in a way. Um, I also want to be able to give back to my community. And the only, and one of the ways you can give back is to earn more, right? Like I can donate more to the mosque that my dad and my mom go to here in New York because I'm making enough to actually have some sort of disposable income to be able to donate to the nonprofits and the religious organizations and 
you know, the educational organizations that are important to me and that I value. And so compensation. And so compensation will come in a couple of different ways. And you can think about it overall like benefits. And so each company is different in terms of how their benefits are laid out. So some companies, your benefits may just be, you know, your health insurance, your, um, your health insurance, what your, your base salary is, and then um, your like 401k plan. So those are all really great things to also look at when it comes to um, what's important to you. And those, it's also information that you could find online. You can, it's, you can typically find a lot of that information online to understand does the company match if I wanna you know, have a 401k and how much do they match by? Do they match 8%, 50%, $100 per dollar until I hit a cap? Understanding that is important. Um, my base salary, what is the base? How, often, how does that move throughout the years? Or am I gonna be stuck at this base for five years even though cost of living is gonna go up, right? Um, that's important. And then um, health insurance. Health is wealth. Like I, another thing I believe in, like taking care of your health, figuring out the things that are important about your health and making sure you're, you're taking care of that. And so really look and see if that's important to you, what are the options that you have in that organization? And then some companies will also have things like um, stock. So like Microsoft, if it's a publicly traded company, they'll offer you stock um, or they'll offer you a bonus um, at the end of, at the, end of the, the fiscal year. And so really take the time to learn and see what are all those things and how do you, and does it align and is it gonna help you feel fulfilled in that bucket? Um, and also negotiate like whatever. And I told my, my brother just graduated from college um, in May and you know, he got a job and it was, it's, with a, um, it's with Fidelity and it's like a, it's like a leadership program. And typically a lot of those programs, they tell you, you can't negotiate that doesn't mean you shouldn't negotiate. Just because they tell you you can doesn't mean you shouldn't. You should at least try. And so even though he tried, like, you know, so I told him, like, try to negotiate at least 10% above whatever the base they're giving you is. Try to negotiate for a higher bonus. Try to negotiate for a stock if that's something they're offering you. Whatever they're giving you, try to negotiate up because all they can do is say is, actually, you know what, we do have an extra however much money we can actually bring your base up. You'll be surprised. Or they'll tell you, this is actually, we can't move on this, but we can move on that. So when I negotiated Microsoft, I tried to negotiate base, even though I knew and people told me they're not gonna move on base. I was like, whatever, like I'm gonna still try. I tried to negotiate on base. They wouldn't move on base, but they moved on bonus and they moved on stock. And I was like, okay, cool, I'll take that. Now I can move on. And so um, be willing to negotiate and be willing to find a company that will allow you to negotiate because you're worth actually more than a lot of them will pretend like you are. That was like a very long winded answer to that question, but hopefully um, it was helpful. Um, the second question, what major should you pursue to be able to work at Microsoft? Uh, it depends on what you wanna do. Like I studied Africana studies in French in college. Like I'm not technical at all. Um, I was, I studied humanities. My parents were worried, you know, like a good child studying French and like history, like what are you going to do with your life? Um, and so that's what I studied in college. I worked in education for about six years um, and I worked in the education policy space for six years. And so I have a master's in education policy. And then, um, you know, I, I got my MBA and I think like the MBA is what well, I wouldn't even say just the MBA. I think it was a combination of the different educational opportunities that I had that actually helped me land the job that I have now because I gained different skill sets. If you're interested in engineering, you obviously need to study engineering. So if that's something you're interested in, making sure that you're taking courses, whether it's at school or learning on your own, Microsoft actually um, is one of few companies that within the tech industry that um, we're not only looking at candidates who like went to college and studied engineering. We actually hire a lot of people who are self-taught engineers and like taught themselves how to code and taught themselves how to do all of these really awesome things um, with technology. Um, and we're able to pass, you know, there's like a technical 
test that they have to take before they get interviewed and they're able to pass that. And so um, I would say, you know, that's one thing. If you're interested in marketing, Microsoft has marketing, just, just like all of these tech companies. So if you're interested in tech in general, don't limit yourself to just technical skills. All of these companies have non-technical work as well. So marketing, they have communications, they have program manager roles, they have, you know, HR, they have, you know, social media um, folks. They, there's a range of different things. Uh, one of the things that we have, we actually also have like a philanthropy team. And so those are a lot of the people who work in that philanthropy team actually used to work in nonprofits in the past and now work at the company and are still doing the same work, but on a different scale. And so I would say just do research and see what are the things that you're interested in and going and looking and seeing what are the qualifications for those specific things. How should a person working in the corporate world approach launching a business with a limited amount of time outside of the work office? And is it worth downgrading your engagement in the corporate position? Um, <laughs> so I, I, have a, I have a small business um, that I, I started. The thing is, I will say though, I started it in business school. So I started in my second year of business school. I was taking fewer classes because um, I was almost done with, with the things that I was working on um, for my degree. And so I was able to start it in business school. Um, but I do know people who, you know, work at Microsoft and other tech companies, and they're starting side projects and side businesses as well. I think the question you need to ask yourself if that's something you're interested in is, are you willing to put in the hours outside of the office to get it done? Like before this call, I was working on our website and working on looking at the data from our analytics from the last week and trying to set up gift cards and all this other stuff on our website. And so, and it's Sunday, right? Like, and I, I've been doing, I was, I started working on that stuff around two o'clock until like six and then got ready for this call. And so I think it's more so of, are you willing to put the time and the energy and maybe lose a little bit of sleep at the beginning as you're getting things up and running to make it work. And I, I will say there's a benefit of having a stable salary and then having a, you know, a side business or launching a business on the side because you can actually use your salary in a sense to help launch that business and to help fund the beginning pieces of it until it is profitable, um, which is really hard to do um, which is really, really hard to do when you don't, you know, have that early on. And so, um, and especially like we know that it's harder for, for Black people to get funding for businesses as well. And so that's the other thing to think about. Um, and I wouldn't say, I think in terms of like downgrading your engagement in the corporate position, like, that's like something you have to ask yourself. Like one thing that I shared with my business partner and she knows um, is that I'm not willing to quit my full-time position at Microsoft to take on just the business fully because I really want to develop a career out at the company while also running my business whereas she's in a different place where she's she's like ready to quit her day job and just do the business full time. And so if you do have a business partner, I think it's helpful to um, be able to balance that out. Um, but that's more of like a pr personal question you have to ask yourself of like, where do you see yourself? What's what are the things that you value in terms of your career, in terms of your growth? And what are the things you have to compromise on? Because a lot of it is compromising. Hopefully that was helpful, Mustafa. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I think we can stop taking questions for a second. Just okay. To move second. Yeah, so let me move, move us forward. And then um, I did see the engineering question if, for the fifth grader. So there are a bunch of nonprofits for Black boys and girls um, to help get us to, to do more coding. Um, and so I would say, I, don't, I can't remember the specific name of one of them, but um, that's where you would start. So look, look for nonprofits that have um, free like boot camps. Um, Microsoft, I think sometimes offers, Google also has some free boot camps for engineering for 
um, kids who are in like elementary, middle school and high school, but there are a lot of free resources to, to start with um, if you're interested in learning engineering. And I'm, I'm actually really happy to, to see that you're interested in that, Abdullahi, because I think we need more um, Black folks in engineering. During Genjif, the video being in Don Satan, keep Kuchibagat, Yen and Video, Nare Abonne Fi, the Funkap TV, Funkap, the Fondation Cher Ahmadou Bamba, Bunor America, Binga Hamne, Molekele, Daira Yenek, Fi, Etats Unis, Acta Canada.